Katie from Crafting with Katie and today I'm going to share how I made this cute card using images from Cricut Design Space, some cute sentiments from my creative time, and a fun new product called the Circuit Marker Starter Kit that lets you create light up cards using LEDs and some coin batteries. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on Insert Images to collect the images I need for this project. And I know that they are in the Mini Monsters cartridge. So I'm clicking on there and then I can search for the cartridge by name. So here it is, so I can click on view all of the images. And I'm going to be using this cute little monster with the pirate patch, so I'll select that. And I also want a tree to put behind him. And I'm going to choose this tree right here. So now that, now that I've selected those two images, they appear on the bottom, and I can click insert images. Okay, so I have my two images. And I find it helpful when I'm making a card to set a canvas because that just helps me with the sizing of my images. So once you click set canvas, there are lots of different canvases to choose from for whatever project you're using. So I'm going to choose cards. And if you click over on canvas on the top right, it'll show you exactly which card you've chosen. And if you click here, you can choose the size or make a custom size. And it's already set at the card type I'm using, which is five and a half by four and a quarter, set at the vertical alignment. So I'm going to drag my monster over here and size him to how I want him. And I think I'd like him to be about a three inch height. So I'm just going to adjust his height to three inches. There we go. And then the tree, I thought would just go behind him. So I'm going to just click on the tree and resize. And if it's hanging off the left side a little bit, that's fine because I can just cut some of that off. So, and I'm going to leave a little bit of space because I'm going to have a smaller layer that'll be five and a quarter by four inches that this whole thing will be mounted on. So. I don't want to make it, and actually if I look at his height right now, I don't want to go over five and a quarter. Right now it's 5.11, so that's good. So let's see, we will do it probably about right here. I want to leave room on the top right for my sentiment. So I'm going to move it over, leave a good amount of space over there. Move my monster down. Okay, that looks cute. I just don't want to make his patch look like it's kind of connected to the tree, which it kind of does right now. Let's see how we could do that. If I make him a little lower, I could make it look like the tree is set back a bit. That's good. Okay. So now, actually it might be a little bit too high. There we go. All right, so I'm happy with the position. So what I'd like to do is the back layer of this monster is black, and to make this card just not be too bulky, I'm going to weld together that back black layer of the monster to the actual tree here. So I'm going to click on the monster and right-click and choose Ungroup. And then I'm going to take away all of the other layers of him. Now, there's this. I did not want to move him, but that's okay. I can get the eyeball now. There we go. So I'll put the monster back where I wanted him, which was about here. I'll move him up a little bit. Okay, that's good. So now that he's selected, if I hold down my shift key and select the tree as well, now I can right click and choose weld. And then the, now they're one image. You can see if I drag it around, it's just one big image. So 
The next thing I want to do, since I am using that LED light, is I would like, um, the LED light is going to be behind that white layer that I mentioned I'm going to have on the card. So I want it to be able to glow through without, not, without um, having a bunch of bulky layers or it won't show. So I need a hole in this black layer and then need a hole in the blue layer. So to do that, I'm going to take this white eyeball here. I'm going to place it right where the eye would be on the patch. Just help me align it and then just move it over with the right arrow to see where it would be. So I think that's pretty good. And then I'm going to copy it because I'm going to need it for the other one also. So I'm going to click copy. I'm going to click paste. Just put it over here for now. All right, so now that it's where I want it, I'm going to click on it. Hold down my shift key and click on this blue layer. And then I'm going to right click and choose attach. So now you can see when I cut this blue layer, it's also going to cut out that circle. So now to help me align this over here, I'm going to put this layer on top of the black one. Exactly where I want it when I adhere it. So that's good. And then I'm going to take the other eye. It's wanting to go behind so I can just right click and click move to front. And I'm going to put it right on top, just to help get everything aligned perfectly. And then I'm going to move the blue one away. And again, I'm going to click on the white, hold down the shift key, click on the black, right click, and attach. And it's very hard to see, but I can see there's a very faint black line here showing that it's going to cut out of there as well. Okay, I'm about ready to cut. I do not need the black pupil because instead I'm going to have that glowing red LED so I can get rid of that, but I can go ahead and cut out the rest. I've gone ahead and adhered my little monster and tree to the white layer and then I stamped this cute sentiment from the My Creative Time Let's Celebrate stamp set, which also includes this really cute party die. And then I also made an inside layer using the banner from the same stamp set and then the little four date time place RSVP, which is also included there. Very fun for a party invitation. And then I thought it would be fun to add this little spider from the latest My Creative Time Halloween set called Too Cute to Spook. So this is where I want the little LED light to shine through. And I'm going to be using this Circuit Marker Starter Kit, which includes everything you need to make a light-up card. So it includes this Circuit Marker, which has silver conductive ink. It has four LEDs in four different colors. It has coin cell batteries. There's two included in the kit. I've used one. There is um, blank circuit paper, that one that you can see I already drew on. There's a circuit eraser, a circuit stencil that helps you get everything in the right position for using the coin batteries and the LEDs. There's an instruction manual, um, there's aluminum tape, the blank circuit paper, there's actually several sets. There's extra little adhesive labels for the LEDs. Really anything you need to make your card is included in this kit, actually for making a couple of cards. Really a fun kit to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to figure out exactly where I want the LED placed so it shines through in the right position. So I'm going to just take my card and mark on the back of it with a pencil that just by holding it up to the light where exactly that point is going to be. And then I can use my ruler to make measurements and make the same measurements on the circuit paper so that everything is positioned exactly. So I have my little dot here. I'm just kind of measuring, holding it up. You can see the circuit paper is slightly larger than the paper that I had, so I'll be trimming that down towards the end. But I'm just trying to figure everything out here. Okay, so I am just figuring out that my little dot is about two and an eighth inches in from the shorter side of the card and you have to think about that the card you're measuring is on the back and you're going to be using the front side of the circuit paper so you have to keep that in mind so you're not doing this backwards. 
So I'm just measuring about two and an eighth inches up from the bottom. I'm just going to draw a little line. And then we'll measure how far we are from the long side of the card. It's about one and three sixteenths inches. And then I'll just make a little dot there. And that's just going to show me exactly where to position my LED so that that little eye will glow red. So now making this, the little circuit to, to use the LED is so easy because it comes with a circuit stencil and everything's labeled. So you know it's going to light up right between the two semicircles. So you just position your stencil, take the circuit marker, and color it in. And what the circuit marker is, is it's silver conductive ink. So you know you need um, something conductive between a battery and your light. And they, this AGIC company has developed this conductive ink pen, which is amazing for card makers because you wouldn't want like the bulk of a wire and having to deal with taping that down. You just draw it on. So you draw on the, the light sensor, and then the coin battery, the stencil is having it... Um, the, these little circles are separated perfectly for the leads of your battery, and you can put it anywhere on your card. I, I just happen to choose there because I know I'm going to have some tape in between. So I mean, some foam tape around the edges, and then you draw some wires on. Your wires just have to um, go from the LED to the battery, so that you're ending up with a complete circuit because your battery is going to connect the two circles, and the LED will connect the two semicircles. And that's really all there is to it. It's so easy. So uh, the lights, uh, the LEDs that come in the kit are the white, red, blue, and green. I already used the white on another project that you can see on my blog. So I'm putting the red one on this card. So you just stick it right on, self-adhesive. And then the battery has these little, um, just a little coin battery, and there's a uh, little metal attachment. You can see once you press it down, you can see it light up. It's really bright red light, but when you, when I either photograph it or video it, it's hard. It just doesn't come through like it does in person. Um, the kit comes with this adhesive aluminum tape that you can just peel off and tape that right down too. Now people have asked me how long the light stays on. When I originally asked AGIC how long, they said about a week. But I made my original card, I think it's been three weeks now, and that light is still on. It's very faint now. It was still, it stayed on very bright for about two weeks, and it's still, if you turn off the light in my room, you can still see it shining faintly. So um, I was really impressed with that, and actually they were too, and I told them that it was still on. So yeah, you can get a couple of weeks going with it on, it's, which is very fun. So there it is. It is on, shining bright. And then when we take our card over and we put that, there we have our shining, glowing monster eye. So now I just need to trim off that extra part so um, this will look better on my card. So I'm going to trim that right now. Okay, the circuit paper is trimmed down, so now it is time to put this card together. I made a little card base with some Aqua Mist cardstock from Paper Tray Ink. And I'm just going to use my ATG to get some adhesive on there. And then the circuit paper will just fit on there perfectly. I'm just making sure that I have everything aligned so that the eyeball is positioned just right on, and then the rest of the card will be centered on the card base. So I think this looks pretty cute with the monster eye. The nice thing about doing this on an invitation is it wouldn't necessarily be something that somebody would have out on display for a super long time. So it's fun to have uh, the light on something like that. And then even when the light bulb runs out, it'll still be cute. 
Okay, so because the battery has a little bit of bulk because it's a coin battery, I am going to use some foam tape to just raise up the whole outside, um, just leaving some space for the LED and the coin battery, and then they won't be damaged at all. So I'm just going to put that around the edges. So you can see that really will protect the battery and the LED. And then it's just a matter of putting that last little part on. Sometimes it helps to put it upside down when you've got your foam tape kind of close to the edge there like I did. Just got to make sure none of it's peeking through. But there we go. Super cute party invitation. And the last step is just to put the little piece on the inside. So I'm just going to use some ATG on this. So right now, this Let's Celebrate Stamp and Die set is on sale at the My Creative Times store. So if you don't have it, this is a good time to go and get it. Um, it's really fun. You, there's all sentiments on there for Christmas, Halloween, birthday, bachelorette, all sorts of parties. Great for making invitations. So thank you so much for watching, and for more information, you can visit my blog, craftingwithkatie.com.